Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, Sylvia Knits in Color. Today we're doing a bit of a different video, not like a podcast or a vlog or anything like that, but a little tutorial, something very easy, simple, and basic to use up some of your fingering weight scraps. And since you clicked on it and probably read the description, you know it's going to be a scrappy mug rug. So this is one that I already made like last week and it's great for using up scraps of fingering weight yarn. You hold five strands together and basically knit a little square coaster and add fringe, hence the name mug rug. It looks like a little rug for your mug. I actually ran out of one of my colors uh, while I was doing my fringe, so the hot pink isn't on all the fringe, but that's the whole point. It's fun, it's scrappy, it's meant to use up what you have. So, first of all, what do you need to make a scrappy mug rug? First of all, you're going to need a pair of knitting needles. These are five millimeter. These are five millimeter knitting needles. You're going to need a crochet hook to add the fringe. I used a 5.5 millimeter, but most sizes should work. It just can't be too small, because if not, you're not gonna be able to grab all the strands or you're gonna struggle too much with that. You're also going to need some scissors. These are my cute unicorn embroidery scissors. And of course, you're going to need your yarn. So this requires five strands of fingery weight yarn and you don't need a whole lot of any of them. So for this one, I'm going to use some leftover Arweta by Phil Colana in a light purple color. We're going to use some of this lovely alpaca sock from Vulcan Yarn. We're going to use some of this really vivid purple from Life in the Long Grass. And I think we're going to go for some of this pink, speckled pink from Hedgehog Fibers. And how many is that? One, two, three, four. And then some of this rainbow variegated yarn from Hansi Design. So once you have all of that, it's time to start and I'll See you in a moment. We're gonna move the camera and see if I can get my hands. Holding all five strands together, cast on 18 stitches using a long tail cast on or whatever your preferred cast on may be. It can be a little tricky dealing with so many strands, so just make sure they don't get all tangled up and you use all of them to cast on every stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So now we should have 18 stitches cast on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Great! Now we can start knitting and this is a one row repeat and I will show you how it is done once or twice. So we're doing a garter stitch square, pretty much, but with an applied I-cord border. So we're just going to knit knit every stitch until the last two. Out of here, tail. Okay. 
these colors are feeling very springy, very apropos right now, especially with the green, playing with the pinks and the purples. And again, make sure you pick up every single strand. It can be a bit tricky. We've made it to the last two stitches on my needle and what I'm going to do to start creating that applied eye cord is put the yarn in the front and then slip those two stitches purlwise. And that's all you're going to do until your mug rug gets big enough. And then you just do a basic bind off. Let me show you one more time. So let's go back the other way. And then you're just going to knit those two slip stitches as usual. Can be a little bit tricky, you know, as I keep saying, to get into all five. So take your time, make sure you pick them all up because you don't want to have random loops sticking out of your mug rug. Make sure you know, your strands don't get tangled or anything. Sometimes you need to pull on them individually to smooth them out. And now we've knit until the last two. And then you're just going to put your yarn in the front not sure if this is the best angle, but put your yarn in the front and then slip them purlwise. Again, all five strands. So slipping those two stitches is going to create an I-cord border little by little on each of each end. And I will come back to see you once this is big enough to show you the cast off or the bind off and there go the cars again. I guess it's rush hour. And it's show, show, show you the bind off and then how to add the fringe, which is all very, very simple. So it is the next day. I actually finished doing my rubbers last night, but the sun had kind of already set. I did 16 rows of garter stitch with the applied I-cord border. If you don't know how to count garter stitch, it's pretty easy. You can even pull a little bit to separate and see this is one row. This line of little U's and upside down U shapes so you can count that way. But again, you know, you can do 18 stitches, you can do 20, you can do however many you want. You just want this to be kind of thick, to be a good kind of coaster. And now that I have my final size done, just need to do a regular bind off. I'm just gonna knit and then pass them over each other. So 
I'm going to try to film it a little better than I did the cast on. And then we're going to go through how to do the fringe, which is also very, very simple. we go, bound up. And then for the fringe, you're going to take all five of your strands again and you're going to cut pieces that are about twice as long as you want your fringe to be. So if you want your fringe to be about an inch, two and a half centimeters, you should cut two inches, about five centimeters. Let's say I want my fringe to be, I don't know, I'm not doing this very exactly, but uh, about this length. Can always trim it later too. I think it's better to cut it a little bit longer so it's easier to handle than too short and then trim. So about this length I'm going to take that, fold it in half, and snip. Okay and now you make sure that you hold on to this loop. You're going to grab your crochet hook. Here we go, so this is the 5.5 millimeters. And you're going to go into either your cast on edge or your bind off edge. And you can space out your fringe as far or as close as you want. On my pink one, I did about every other stitch. So I think I'm going to do the same thing here and start right at this corner here. You are going to take your crochet hook here and you can see the stitches at the edge here. Seeing as here we have a little bit of fringe here already, we're not going to go through here. We're going to ignore this stitch and then put the hook under both strands here. On well, both strands, we've got a bunch of strands, but under both parts of this V. Grab the fringe that we have cut out loop it around your crochet hook like so and pull it through. I hope you can see that clearly. We have basically just pulled the loop through. Then you're going to pull on it a little bit. Take out your crochet hook and pull. This is a little bit tricky because you've got so many strands but you're just going to pull everything through that loop and tighten. So we have a little bit of fringe. And now you're just going to continue doing that all throughout this end and then on this end. So I'm just going to film myself while I do that so you can watch for a little bit.
but I probably won't speak anymore and I will just put this on a kind of fast forward. If you want, you could cut out all of your pieces of fringe at the same time, but I just don't want them to get all mixed up, especially since there are so many strands. But if you really want to, you could. Here we have all the fringe on one side already. As you can see, they're not exactly an even equal length, but we're going to go through and give them a little haircut afterwards. I'm just going to do the other side off camera and then just show you how I trim the little fringe hairs. I'll see you in a moment. Okie dokie, we're back. We're done with the fringe. As you can see, it's not quite the same length everywhere, and it's a bit too long anyway. But this is, you know, a personal taste thing. If you want your mug rug to have really long fringe, go ahead. I think I'm going to trim mine to about here. And you just kind of brush them out. And snip. It came out a little short. Maybe I should have left it a little longer, but you know, we're gonna live with that. And then just do the same thing on the other side. There you go. A cute little mug rug. Easy, scrappy project with zero ends to weave in. I hope you enjoyed this little mug rug tutorial. Now go forth and make all the mug rugs. Have a nice day.